Yeah. Hit some hiccups along the way. I was going to just stay with him for a few weeks while I looked for an apartment and a job down in Bellingham and I didn't think much of it, you know, no big deal. He's yeah. got an extra bedroom, I can come stay in the extra bedroom, I'll look for jobs, I'll go down for interviews and it'll be a few weeks and then I'll settle in. Well, the border yeah. didn't see it that way, they definitely Yeah, didn't. well, you, she didn't have any ties back to America, so it basically looked like we were trying to illegally smuggle you in. Right. If you know anything about legal immigration, you don't just roll on up and say, hey, I'm here illegally. But yeah. but that's how they see it. They were just doing their job. And so they said, no, you can't come in. And so you got denied access for like three months. Yeah. So they said I couldn't come back for, for three months uh, for, you know, various reasons. I won't go into detail. So that was really nerve wracking. Yeah. You had all your stuff in your car. And yeah. I had all my clothes. Like, okay. And, what do we do? Yeah. Luckily, my sister, uh, moved to America, so we actually kind of just traded. Uh, yeah, I took her spot. <laughs> she went to America for her husband, and they lived in Linden, which was is literally right beside Bellingham, like it's super close to the border. And it just so happened they were actually just about to move to Florida in like two weeks or so. Yeah. So they were still here for two more weeks, so we like, call, as soon as this happened, we called them and were like, are you up? It was, pro it was probably around like eight or nine, oh, okay. but they go to bed like super early. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, hey, like, can we come over? Like, this is what happened. And then, you know, they were so gracious and helped us. And, you know, they let they let Beth stay with them while they were packing up to move across America. Yeah. Which is awesome. And it really helped us. I felt terrible, but it was that or just go back home. Drive with all your stuff, just drive all the way back yeah. home. So while that was, while you were staying with them, you were looking for some kind of job and place yeah. to stay in Bellingham and like in two, you had to have that in two weeks or it was to go home and luckily, yeah, exactly. luckily you found it. Yeah, so I found a job, I found an apartment. It was a very interesting time, like yeah. I'd never really done anything, not that it was crazy, but anything quite like that and have it not go as expected. So. Yeah. I ended up living. That was a bit of a shock. Yeah, a bit of a shock. But so I ended up living in Bellingham for a few, like a, m a few months as we, as we dated. And once I was able to come back to Canada again, obviously we saw each other more frequently. He came down and visited me for the three months I couldn't come up. He would come down on the weekends. And yeah, and we, I bring friends sometimes and we just hang out in Bellingham instead of in Canada on the weekends or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So luckily I was able to come back and then, yeah, we would trade weekends. He'd come down one weekend, I'd come up one weekend. and. We just kept doing that for a little while until I think it was June when we got engaged. Yep. So when we got engaged, um, it was re like a really weird story around like how it happened because Trevor had actually unfortunately gotten laid off his job because they closed his department. And mm -hmm. so we we kind of knew like once we figured out, I think like we're meant to be together, like I think we were, we're going to get married. You kind of got to talk about those things when you live internationally. Yeah. You can't just see how it goes for like five years and then maybe, you know, I moved to Bellingham. So we kind of mm -hmm. had to talk about it. So we knew we wanted to get married, but unfortunately we just didn't know when because he, you know, lost his job. The paperwork to move to another country is pretty extensive. The wait, the waiting time was about a year or so. So. Yeah. We just wanted to get it underway, but we weren't really financially in a situation to, you know, be engaged and start planning a wedding. So he had gotten, I think, a job maybe a few, like a month or so before. It was a couple of weeks before we got engaged. Before we got engaged. And I was up for the weekend and I had no, like absolutely no idea. Like I didn't have any inkling that anything was going to happen. But the night before we got engaged, I had this really interesting, vivid dream. And I dreamed that I was at Trevor's house and his phone buzzed and it was a text from one of our one of his group of friends our mutual friends and it said oh i'm on edge today i just can't wait to hear what happens and in the dream master i'm like what's that about and he's like oh nothing like she she's just uh going on a date or he had made up some excuse as to why she would send a text like that okay whatever and i woke up so then the next day uh, that exact, almost that exact thing happened where yeah. he got a text message from a friend that said something that I, I just happened to see out of the corner of my eye, something along those lines. And I was like, what is going on? Because I had literally just dreamed it the night before. We went on like a little date because we used to do like little fun mini dates. And Trevor said, you know, like, I'm really sorry that we can't get engaged sooner. I really want to, but let's just have some fun dates until we can. Let's get creative. Mm -hmm. So. We went to, there's a park nearby here, a really pretty park. Trevor decided to have... A painting contest. Yeah. Because he always painted. Because I used to love to paint. I haven't in a long time, but I love painting. I'm terrible at it. 
<laughs> you're better than you think you are. <laughs> so he said, let's just have a painting contest. And uh, you know, I, there was two benches a few meters apart. He said, okay, you paint over there. I paint over here. We're gonna set a timer for one hour. And then when the hour's up, we have to show each other our painting. And then whoever painted the better photo wins. And so I'm like, okay, fun. Like, I'm gonna win. <laughs> you know, painting away. And I'm just like, mine's gonna be better than yours. Like, completely clueless. And he's like, oh, I doubt it. <laughs> And you're just kind of devilishly like, he, you know, like <laughs> painting over there all like nonchalant, like nothing's going on. And so we get done and there's a little pier over top of this uh, river that runs the Fraser, right? Maybe? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, yeah. there's, a, there's a big river details, that runs through details. Vancouver. Details. And uh, so we go to this little tiny pier uh, to show each other, you know, the, the painting. And so he says, okay, show me, show me your painting first. And I said, okay. And I flipped it over. I think I had painted like a nearby tree and a bench or something that I had yeah. saw nearby. It wasn't anything earth shattering. He's like, okay, I'm going to show you mine now. I said like, all right, let's, let's see it. <laughs> and he turns it over and he had painted, will you marry me? <laughs> it looked like a heart and it was super cute. And so I just started like crying my <laughs> eyes out. I step back and I almost fall into yeah, the river. <laughs> yeah, he had to like grab my arm to keep me from falling into the swiftly moving river uh, underneath us. And you know, he got down on one knee and gave me this beautiful ring that I still wear today. You still wear it today? <laughs> yeah, he says that. He gave me this beautiful engagement ring that I don't wear anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, he gave me a beautiful ring that I love, that he had designed for me, mm -hmm. and had somebody make. So I said yes, of course. And so I can't stop crying. Also, I was hitting him profusely. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I'm slapping him crying and be like, why would you make it up to be like nothing was going to happen today? <laughs> So, what you gotta do. yeah, it was, it was a good surprise. So then we, we were engaged for, we actually got legally married really quick. Yeah. Like a couple of weeks later, we took two of our close friends, Wade and one of other of our close friends with us to someone who could legally marry us. And we just did a quick little legal ceremony in her backyard because when you want to bring someone into Canada or to go to America, you can't uh, apply for a visa. Like I couldn't apply for a visa for Beth until we were legally married. Yeah. So basically what we did is we got the legal marriage done as soon as possible so we could get that ball rolling because it takes over a year yeah. to, for the paperwork to process and everything. So we were like, well, we don't want to have this amazing wedding ceremony and then not be able to live together for over a year, that sucks, right? We started that and then we basically planned our wedding for, I think it was like 10 months from then. Yeah. So we had our wedding in February. Uh, it was awesome, super fun time. It was a good but wedding. <laughs> it was a really good wedding, everybody had a good time. Yeah. And then it was, I think like five months, six months later, the paperwork finally approved. Yeah, we went on our honeymoon and then unfortunately because our my, when my residency was still in process, I had to go back to my apartment in Bellingham. And so for the first five to six months that I had to go back March home. March to August, yeah. Yeah, and just live by myself in my apartment. And I'll be honest, that was probably like one of the most emotionally taxing or challenging times yeah. of my life because I was so excited to get married. I had this amazing husband and I had to go home and live by myself and I could see him on the weekends. And it, it was, you know, in retrospect, everything's fine, you know, now. And I could have been a lot braver back then looking back, but in the moment you don't really see where things are going to be, you know, five years down yeah. the road, you just see your current situation. So I remember being kind of not somebody I was proud of. I was stressed all the time. I was kind of short with people around me because I just wasn't feeling like things were going how I wanted. I was very happy to be married, but I wasn't happy that I had to live by myself in another country. So eventually everything worked out. I got my uh, okay letter to move. I packed my boxes so fast. Yeah, that's within the same week. Yeah, within a week or two, I was ready to go. So I packed up, I gave notice, I quit my job, and I came up here. We did it all in like a day. We just hauled all my stuff up, and yeah. I was so nervous to roll up to the border because every time I had gone through before, they had given me a hard time because, because it would have happened. Yeah, three months. And mm -hmm. so I thought it was going to be a nightmare moving, and it was no problem. It was absolutely a godsend miracle. I rolled up, I said, hey, like, I'm here to move with my husband. I just got my permanent residency. They were like, okay, stamped a few boxes, signed a few papers, sent me on my way, and I was Super here. Super easy. It was the easiest thing of any, any border experience I'd had before then. That wave of relief, as soon as I put 
<laughs> my key in my car and drove away from the border to be home and live with Trevor now in Canada was probably one of the most holy holy crap moments, yeah. <laughs> you know? That was 2015, you know, he kept working at his job. I luckily found a job within, actually got two job offers within a week of being here, which yeah. was crazy, because I thought it was gonna be hard to find a job being from another country, but luckily I had the fact that I had a previous job, you know, right across the border, because Vancouver knows, like Americans oh, yeah. come up here and they go down there and it's- We're so close to the border that like- it's... Yeah, when you live in a border city, yeah. it's really not a big deal, so. Everyone says like their first year of marriage is the hardest, it really was. Like, no, it's pretty straight. I think it's because we went through so much crap yeah. at the borders and just getting not being able to see each other that just getting to see each other and be together was like awesome. Yeah, it was so. super exciting. So it was still like really cool to yeah. yeah, just be together for real. So that was really good. Here we are, we've been married for five years now. Yep. Happily married. We have a fur baby named Dante, who's our pride and joy. Mwah. And yeah, we're looking forward to making more music and having many more years to share together. Yeah. I mean, that's basically our story of how you know we met and got engaged, got married, and, and started living together. We're finally able to live together. Uh, we won't go into detail in this video, just obviously how we started making music and all that stuff, because we feel we've talked about it quite a bit before, and uh, blog posts on our website, and I wrote one, and then our main story is actually its own blog post so uh, if you guys want to see like a video of us talking about that we can totally do that let us know but yeah. otherwise uh, that's all on our website for you already thanks for listening to our story bye guys bye